meet on Tuesday, January 2nd at 7 p.m. here in wonderful Newfoundland Isle at the Shelter House. We will go with the call to order and then invocation by Karen Marie. Ready? opportunity for us to come together, Lord. We're thankful for a successful 2017. God, we ask that you guide us through 2018, Lord. Just bless uh, our police force and our first responders and everyone sitting up here, Lord, and all the citizens in New Carolina. God, we ask that every decision we made uh, be made to, to glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Second, Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Okay. Mr. Lighty? Point of order. Oh, no, no, no. Huh? Point of order. He can't vote, and you can't vote. I realize that. In I realize that. I just keep covering it. You got me out of order here, so I'm trying to figure out who belongs and who doesn't yet. Okay. Mr. Leffley? Yes. Okay. Mr. Leffley? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Leffley? Yes. Okay. Pass this forward to zero. Thank you, sir. All right. Mr. Collier, I believe that you are up to uh, give the oath of office to Councilman Lighty. That is correct. Mr. Cook and Mr. Cobb. I have two pieces of paper for you here, sir. <laughs> you will sign both of those for me when we get to that point. Gentlemen, the way I'd like to do this this evening, I'd have the three of you if you'd stand. And what I'm going to do when I say I, I want to go down the line and say your name. And then we'll offer the rest of the road together. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support, support the Constitution, Constitution of the United States. States. The laws of the state of Ohio. The, the laws, laws of the state of Ohio. Of Ohio. The charter and laws of the city of New Carlisle. The charter and laws of the city of New Carlisle. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. Perform the duties of this office of the city council member. the duties of the office of the city, city council member. Do the best of my ability. The best of my ability. Very good. So I had you sign and date, and also print your name there next to I on, on both forms, and I'll take them both back. So you can give them to me at the end of the meeting. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Dale, 
would you like to get a uh, photo of them all together behind, like in front of the seal? We can do that after. Do it after? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Collier. All right, I'll move on to roll call now with the new council member when you're ready, sir. I mean, it's hard to do this. I'll just go down the line here. <laughs> Mayor Lowry. Here. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Here. Lighty. Yes. Mr. Leslie. Present. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Here. All present. Thank you, sir. Throw my seating chart off big time here. I'm going to keep track of my paperwork here, but it'll, it'll work its way out. Hmm. All right, dropping down to the election of the mayor and vice mayor. So mayor. what we will do is have a motion to we'll do this one at a time. We'll do, not one at a time, but we'll do the election of the mayor, and then we'll do the vice mayor after this one. Mr. Lindsay. I move we appoint Mr. Reynolds as mayor. Second. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Leffler. We move to nominate Mike Lowry as mayor. We already have a motion on the floor. Point of order. Point of we order. Already have a, or we already have a motion. Point of, point of order, everyone, please. According to Section 12 of the Rules of Council, in absence of council rule or charter provisions, council should be governed by Robert's Rules of Order. If you look at our Rules of Council, if you look at our charter, there's no, no procedures on how to vote. Therefore, we have to follow Robert's Rules of Order. Under Robert's Rules of Order, you nominate everyone for a position, close the nominations, and then vote on that position. So therefore, I move nominations, excuse me, I move to, to nominate Mike Lowry as mayor. Second. And that is accurate. You follow the Robert's Rules of Order. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, or Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. I move the nominations to be closed. Second. Let me, let me back up just a minute. Who made the second on Mr. Reynolds? Mr. Cobb. 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 Okay. Who made the motion on Mr. Lowry? Lighty. Oh, the second was Lighty. Lovely. Lighty, second. <laughs> And your second one was Cobb. Uh, Cobb, uh, I'm sorry. just as any other time when we have a second on any ordinances or... Something for debate. First, we have to come on the to be closed. Thank you. Point four, I'm sorry, sir. You're going to call for the vote to close the close nominations. The oh, okay. I got you. Mr. Cook. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Cobb. Oh, we vote wrong. Was there, any, was, there, was there any debate? No. We're just closing the nominations. Do we? So you don't need. You don't have to vote on that, do you? To close the nominations? No. You could debate if you didn't want to. So I guess we should have asked for a question to debate on that. Okay. No, I'm just saying. Is there yeah, debate? If there's debate, you have your debate. You okay. hear from the public, and then you, and then you have your vote. Okay. All right. All right, with that said, I have something I would like to read. The council does not mind. Okay, so you're not recording anything. You are, Mr. Collier? I am now. The sure. It's, it's on now. All right, first off, let me uh, wish you all a happy new year. And, and as we start on to our journey here in 2018 here in New Carlisle, hopefully we will all be able to, hopefully we will all be able to stay warm, especially over these past few weeks with the extreme cold temperatures. Let me say it has been an honor to be able to serve on city council and for the citizens over the past six years. We have seen our city change for the better over the recent years, and we as council need to make sure that we stay focused on doing just that. Being on the city council is not always easy, and the decisions we make are, all, are not always the most popular. Uh, but no matter what, we should make sure that those decisions and intent in bringing our city... <coughs> 
excuse me. We should make those decisions with the intent of bettering our city as a whole. With that being said, I feel must do just that by shedding some light on some issues that will not be fun or easy to talk about. Uh, but doing so, I feel is the best interest of the city, and the best interest for the city of New Carlisle and its citizens. As many of you, as many of you know, elected officials such as ourselves are legally held to higher standards when it comes to ethics. Ethics are in place for multiple reasons when it comes to government elected officials, but mostly, I would say these rules are in place to keep corruption and collusion to a minimum. Unfortunately, these rules are not always followed, and a couple of our current councilmen feel that they are above that or have a different code of ethics in which they must abide by. <clears throat> About a week ago, I called one of our newly elected council members to simply ask him to consider me when it comes time to appoint uh, for the new mayor, for the mayor's position. I went on to explain to how hard I've worked over the years on and off the city, on and off the city council. From the festival and the ball drop to putting everything I had into keeping another building from going empty and becoming an eyesore like the new girl out there. I am not one to pat myself on the back, I explained, but I simply am pointing out that I've worked hard, and in my opinion, I've earned my position over and over for, for the mayor's position. I've given the city of New Carlisle 110% even before I was elected, and I have and will continue to do so no matter what. The newly elected councilman said, and I will quote, I agree with you 100%. You have done a wonderful job at the city and as mayor, but I have made a commitment and I have to honor that commitment. I then, asked the I, I then asked what the commitment he made was, and his answer to me was quite shocking. He stated that two particular current councilmen approached him earlier in the year and asked him to run for council. The newly elected councilman then told the two that he was interested in running for, for council but had concerns as far as being physically able to get out and do the things that are, that are involved with running a campaign such as putting signs out. He then told me that the two elected council members made an offer, or a deal if you will, of helping him with his campaign in exchange, giving, him, giving them both a vote for mayor and vice mayor. I was shocked to hear this, to say the least, and went on to explain that a newly, to, the newly elected official, to the newly elected official that this sort of action from two current council members is completely unethical and potentially legal by the standards in which elected officials are held, and that there, is, there should be no place for this type of behavior on New Carlisle City Council. Uh, you know, we hear time and time again about corrupt people uh, on New Carlisle City Council, and that they're, they're, you know, they're trading favors and things of that nature, they're the buddies, and it's just... So trading votes and services in my book are a big no-no, but we will have to see what the Ethics Commission has to say before we take any action on this type of situation. I, along with the other elected officials on this council, are tired of being the ones who have to take the high road and let situations like this go by the wayside just so we can keep the, name, the city's name out of the headlines. As of, as of today, these types of actions will be brought forward and, and brought to light. If we do not, then we are not doing our job ourselves. I would ask the newly elected councilman that I spoke with to reconsider taking part in such an unethical action involved, in two, involved with the two elected council, currently elected council members. I would remind him that on I would remind him that you are on council to do what is best for the city as a whole, not just as one councilman's personal agenda. This is not something we want starting off with, starting off with new officials on council. We are here to do what's, be what's best for the city of New Palau, not to, not to be part of such an unethical action that is simply presented for one's personal gain. I hope that we can all move forward as a team and put this ugly situation behind us. I personally feel that if I should be replaced as council, and I'm just going to try and sell myself here because that's really what this part of the meeting is about. Um, I've, I've worked my tail off in the city, and I don't think anybody could not deny me that. The mayor, how it works is the mayor can get two two terms of two years each, a total of four years. I would assume that if I was to be you know removed as mayor, it would be because I wasn't doing my job, and I think I've done that job personally to 200 percent and higher. Uh, I've put more effort into the city than I hate to say probably anybody sitting up here tonight. Um, so if I'm not doing my job and someone feels that or people feel that I should be replaced as council, I would assume that means I'm not doing my job. And if that is the case, then it's never been brought to me that I am not doing my job as the mayor. 
So that is my two cents on why I should get a vote for returning as the last term as mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowdy. Is that all that conversation true? Is what? Is, is all the conversation true? Were you, were you two approached by Mr. Lindsay and Mr. Reynolds to then help you out with the campaign? No. And return to their votes now? Mr. Cook? I would say that is possibly a halfway through to some degree. However, at that point, I believe that the Ethics Commission outlined something as a value. I don't consider our, what we have done as anything of value. I don't believe that there is anything ethical involved. There is nothing filed with the Ethics Commission. If so, let's see what they've got to say. Okay. Hate that we're in this situation at all. Um, I guess since I've talked, I'll just say my piece. Um, I, for one, I'm going to be voting for Mayor Lowry. He has done nothing to lose his position as mayor. And I got to ask myself, you know, what's something that Mr. Reynolds has done that Mr. Lowry hasn't? And I can't find anything. Um, I'm a list person, so pros and cons. Um, Mr. Lowry, you turned a uh, nonprofit business into a profit as a new club pool. Could have been an empty, another empty building, another giant eyesore. But you guys turned it into something that makes money, so thank you for that. Um, you help out with the ball drop, not just help out, but you basically run it. Um, basically run the Heritage of Life Festival. So two big things going on, in the, well really three big things going on in the city. Thanks for doing that. And uh, then on top of it, um, upstanding council and a uh, citizen. And one thing that I appreciate is I never have to worry about you going on social media or going door to door and talking ill about other council members. So that's kind of uh, big on my list. And also, you've been an excellent mayor for four years and represent the city of Nicola well. So thank you, Mayor Lowry. Um, Mr. Reynolds, you do the tree lighting. Thank you for that. It's a beautiful event. Um, but also, you just, you know, popcorn words, you say, we want to cut 10% off the budget. I want to see the plan. I never said that, but that's okay. Okay, cool. Um, also, you called me heartless, brainless, and I have no courage in referring to yourself as a spine of steel. I think if you want to be mayor, you can't be doing those things. You are the face of the city. You have to be the kind of person that earns respect from federal councilmen and the people and the other citizens. Okay, and you know, I know you're calling everybody that, but that kind of stuck with me a little bit. And the reason why is uh, I, I worked hard to get to where I'm at. And for someone to call me heartless and no courage and brainless, I've been called worse. But to call it from a councilman saying that to me, that, that, that's a stunk. You know, I'm a person, I, I had a business here in town, okay? And I was only able to keep it open for two years. And at first I thought to myself, well, I'm a failure. But instead I worked three jobs for several years to get myself back into position out of debt. Joined the Air Force, my wife and I built our roots here in New Carolina. Bought a house, <clears throat> grew out of that house, bought another house. So now we're property owners too, okay? And you're basically calling me, you know, the things, a local business owner, a veteran, and a property owner, heartless, Brainless and no courage, while you have a spine of steel, right? Yeah. Okay. So those things. But I never said to you directly, but you, 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 did. you took them that way. No, so you're, you said the council members. Um, so, anyways, those things got it. That has to stop. It has to stop. And you need to have humility in that and wisdom. I, I learned humiliation when I had to close down the business. And it's something we all learn and you get wiser from it. So these are lessons that we can get better with. Um, and then coming with the citizens, when you bring a concern, Mr. Reynolds, I want to see you a little more respect talking to the citizens. When they were talking to us about, about that post, you laughed. You laughed about it. Um, you know, I, I think you're a super bright person, but when it comes, when it comes to doing the right thing, 
And when you leave this meeting, what kind of person are you going to be? And how are you going to represent the rest of council? This is going to be the Ethan Reynolds show and the rest of us are just bumbling buffoons. Or are you going to represent all of us in a positive light? So that's why I'm going to be voting for Mayor Lowry. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Council, any other comments? Mr. Barrow. Yes, sir. Back in a meeting, back when we were having a work session with the uh, income tax, you and one other individual called me a racist. Who are you talking to? You and Mr. Uh, Bridge called me a racist in that meeting. I am not a racist. This is totally not true. And for a mayor to call a citizen that, totally not true. no. Okay. And that is the reason why I will not vote for you. You never brought it up to me until tonight. That's okay. Because I don't remember. Can I intervene with this? Sir. Sure. Yes. Because that comment was no one called you a racist. I had said you made a racist remark. Right. That's exactly what was said. Thank and we you. talked about it after the meeting. Yeah, that wasn't. Yeah. You called me a racist. No, I said you made a racist <laughs> remark. I said it was a racist <laughs> remark, is what it was. Okay. All right. And don't drag me into this. Okay. So, good to go, Mr. Pop. Council, any other questions, comments? No. Mr. Collier, it's your turn, sir. We, well, I guess we will start off with. Yeah, I'm a little confused, but yes. <laughs> We're voting on closing the nominations. We already voted on that. Mm -hmm. We already voted on that. Yeah, we're, we're, no, we didn't. We closed the nominations. Not no. huh? we didn't actually we vote. Stopped. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't, we didn't vote. We started. Started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You take comments from the public just like you do in ordinances, like anything else. They have to be on topic to the vote. Oh, okay. So, citizens, any comments tonight? Mr. Kraybacher. Yes. My name is John Kraybacher. I live at 307 North Henry Street. And I'm going to just make a quote out of this book. It's called, If You Can, Keep It. Matter of fact, that came out of uh, Benjamin Franklin after he uh, finished the Constitution. And this is written by Eric McTaxis. And I just want to read just a little bit about, you know, what, you know, it says, one of the frag most fragile parts of our fragile system of ordered liberties is the necessity of a basic trust between the people and their leaders. The Republican form of government with citizens elected representatives is set up in part as a check and a balance against the mob rule that pure democracy can be. But the people must believe that these leaders are indeed their leaders and their representatives. That their, these politicians will have the best interests of those who elected them and the best interests of the whole country, in our situation, the whole city, at heart. They must also believe that they are electing leaders who will balance the pure self-interest that begins to look like corruption with an understanding of what is right for the greater good beyond their district. It is easy to get this balance wrong in either direction. But elected, elected representatives can also get this balance wrong in the other way. Sometimes rather they overdo currying favor with their con constituents. Some elected leaders effectively abandon them, often by caring about themselves and their careers more than the people they serve. Self-interest in this case may drive them in 
to curry favor with the press so that the, their national profile increases often so that they can seek higher office. For these people, the whole game is less about serving those who have elected them than about using their position and their constituents as a stepping stone to higher office. Um, there's one thing I remember Ethan always told me in the very beginning when he was elected, that he wanted a voting block. And he wanted to, people to vote the way he wanted to. That's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? John, can, can you go yeah, ahead, please? Give me his name and number, right, Gene? Or name and address? Just like yeah, I do. That's no problem. My name is Sean Cobb. I live in Bethel Township. My dad was uh, elected council. Uh, I sit here and watch everybody. It's like using your personal vendettas against each other, throwing up all this nonsense. The people elected you guys to do a job. They didn't elect you to sit up here and argue with each other and pull up old dirt uh, to make this person look bad. Uh, it's. I think that everyone's going to vote the way they're going to vote, it, regardless of how anyone else sees it. Uh, you're going to move forward and work. you got to work as a team. You can't work all divided. Uh, nothing will get done. It's great what you've done, Mike. Hey, you've done good. The ball drop, all that stuff, that's outside of the mayor's job uh, to me. Oh. And that's, you did good with it. Oh, you're, it's you're just right. like him doing the tree lighting. Uh, all that's outside of your job. But you have to remember uh, what, you're, what you're elected to do with this position. I mean, it's, it's for the people. It's not personal gain, nothing like that. And I mean, I'm sure a lot of you know, but just uh, that's something you have to stick to. That's all I have. Thank you, Sean. I would, uh, you know, I'd agree with everything you said. I mean, yes, I, I, I know that the ball drop and that stuff is outside of council. I mean, but I, I will point out when I'm trying to pitch myself. Um, but also, Sean, I, let me just, Sean, let me just say something now. Um, with what you said, you said bring up old dirt. I, I wasn't bringing up anything old tonight. It was very recent. So, I mean, if I was saying something that happened a year or two ago, I would agree with you. That's yeah. kind of shady. So. Well, the first thing I will say is I know you two, between you and Ethan, it's always been a, uh, that barrier is there. It's time to move past all that crap. If you're going to let, if you're going to take care of the people, put that stuff on and uh, take care of the people. I would agree. <clears throat> okay. Anyone else in the audience before we move on? All right. Mr. Collier, when you're ready, sir. Okay, the vote is for the close the nominations. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Cobb. Closing nomination. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Lighty. Yes. Mr. Lethley. Mr. Cook. Yes. Motion to close the nomination passes seven to zero. This is after we put Aaron's, this is a alternate agenda with Aaron's name on it. All right. When you're ready, Mr. Collier. Then we're actually we're going to vote now on the motion to uh, appoint Mr. Reynolds as mayor, correct? Yes, sir. Give me two seconds. Take your time. I don't have <laughs> Who are we going first? Hang on just a minute. The original motion was Mr. Lindsay. The second was Mr. Cobb. Mr. Lowry. Oh, hold on. What are we we're going for Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Correct. Okay, no. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Lighty. No. Mr. Lethley. No. Who am I missing in here? Mr. Mr. Cook. Cook. <laughs> Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Yeah. 
Motion to nominate Mr. Reynolds for mayor passes four to three. Thank you, sir. Um, with that being said, we will move on straight to the vice mayor now, since mm -hmm. the vice mayor now is yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Mr. Bethlehem. I am nominating Michael Lowry for vice mayor. Second. Mr. Mayor. I nominate Bill Lindsay for vice mayor. Hang on just a second, folks. You're way ahead of me here. Who made that second, please? Here. Well, Mr. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. First, Mr. Lowry. For the first one, Mr. Lowry. <laughs> Excuse me. Now may I go? Yes. Mr. Mayor, I move to appoint Bill Lindsay as Vice Mayor of New Carlisle. I'll second that. Mr. Mayor? Yes. I move the nominations be closed. Second. I got it. All right. <laughs> Again, <laughs> any discussion tonight? Holy oh, crap. On this vice mayor's position. Audience? This is like creepy quiet. <laughs> I guess that here I should say question question we call for and I can vote. All right. Excellent. We need to close the nominations though. We haven't voted on that. Mr. Mayor. Or the vote. Yeah. All right. Mr. Lindsay. Maybe close nominations. Where did that? Where did that? I, he he said, did it. I second it. Now we just gotta go to the vote. And he said we had to close it. <laughs> no, I said <laughs> technically you should say question and then that would mean there's no Mr. Lindsay. Yes. We're voting to close, We're voting to close the nominations. Yes. All right. Mr. Light. Yes. Mr. Leslie. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Mr. Lowry. Thank you. Uh, you, know, how, you know how confused I am since you guys missed all this seating charge. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Reynolds. Yes. I didn't answer yet. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Mr. Lowry, what's your answer? Okay. Mr. Wethley, Mr. Lowry, thank you, but I don't know. To close the nomination? That's all. Yeah, yeah to close the nomination. nomination. Okay, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The nominations pass the seven to zero. Thank you. Now we're back to voted. the motion to elect Mr. Lowry as vice mayor. Good. Let me go ahead and Mr. Lowry now. Okay. <laughs> the reason this has taken me so long, I have to go back and put the names. Yeah, everybody's name is in a different order now. Just wait for you to move. Right. No, yeah. Don't copy that paper. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Lethley. Yes. Mr. Lighty. No. Mr. Cook. No. Mr. Cobb. This is for Mr. Lighty, correct? For Mr. Lowry, correct? This is Mr. Lowry. Mr. Lowry. No. Mr. Lowry. Thank you, but no. Mr. Reynolds. No. Mr. Lighty. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay. This is common at this I, that's meeting okay. every year. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Mr. Lighty, you said yes. Okay. All right, yeah. That motion fails one. 
Two to five. Yeah, gotcha. Motion to nominate Mr. Lindsay as vice mayor. And that motion was made by Mr. Reynolds, second by Mr. Cook. I'm going to do it a different way this time. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Lowry. No. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Lighty. No. Mr. Lethley. No. Mr. Cook. Yes. Motion for, to nominate Mr. Lindsay for vice mayor passes four to three. Okay. Now everybody switch seats so I can actually get this straight now.
Mr. Leffley, you are out of order. No, I'm not. I'm to call not. someone a, a narcissist is not parliamentary rules. I am sorry. <laughs> it's I'm not calling anybody. You said a narcissist. He's reading, reading to me. Mr. Mr. Leffley, you are also out of order. <laughs> Miss, Mrs. Dinkler, am I correct to call someone a narcissist? An adolescent is out of order. I am correct. Rules of order which say, and you may not visit, uh, not visit, sorry, you may not attack a member of council. I have not attacked anyone. Which sir. is in our rules of council. But if you guys want to play these games, then go ahead. Okay. What I do care about uh, is learning that a councilman is telling people that I am going to vote for him for mayor when I've never even had a conversation with that person. What I do care about is learning that council members have engaged in collusion with candidates promising to assist with their campaign in exchange for the promise to vote for them for position of mayor and vice mayor. Yeah. To say that I am disgusted with this deceitful, unethical, in my opinion, illegal activity would be putting it mildly. This is not, this may be an acceptable practice in Columbus, and God help us if it is, but it is not and should not be an acceptable practice in New July. Throughout my life, I've held firm to the fact that there are three types of individuals that I will not tolerate. And that is a liar, a cheater, or a thief. And I heard, hold firm to that statement today. I cannot and will not be party to the unethical practices outlined above. If people are willing to engage in deceitful activity merely over who is going to be in charge of conducting a business meeting, because in reality, that's what the position of mayor is. Mrs. Dinkler, Mrs. Dinkler, Mr. Lepley, Mrs. Dinkler, ask me to gavel you. Mrs. Dinkler? You can, you can call this out of order now. I already have. I'm going to continue to speak. What would you have me do? You're in charge of the meeting. You can call it out of order. Can I finish my letter, please? No. Next item. City Manager's Report. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Briggs, City Manager's Report. Mr. Mayor. I am on this council. Please acknowledge me. Mr. Lowry. Thank you. There is a point, a very valid and interesting finish to this letter that I think everyone in this room is, needs to hear. All right, well. and, and, and let me add, it has nothing to do with anybody on this council. But point. Seems very reek of collusion, I say. I think an appropriate time to bring it up would be under out of business. I will then. Thank you. Mr. Bridge. Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to share with you and the rest of the council and Mr. Uh, the public the city manager's report. Uh, under informational item, the 2018 city council meeting and pay dates are attached. Uh, so new council members, definitely take this out of your packet, put it in your calendars, or hold on to it. It's packed full of great information. Um, on your left column there, it has the council pay dates. Um, even though we are uh, paid every two weeks, council members are paid once a month. And it's usually the last paycheck of the year. So if you need to know your, um, your personal finances, that's when you'll be paid for every month in 2018. Also, there is council dates up here. Anything that we had a meeting on Tuesday, which is our non-traditional day, is highlighted in bold. If anyone in the audience would like a copy of this, just please let me know. I have some additional packets here you can take with you tonight. Uh, rules of council are attached. Um, city council will review and adopt by resolution at the next city council meeting on Tuesday, January 16th, 2018. Uh, the vote may be delayed should members of city council amend section of the rules of council, and it may be put off if uh, it needs to be uh, reviewed for legality. Clerk of council, council applications. Uh, Gene, uh, Mr. Gene Collier, our current uh, clerk of council has resigned from his position. He has decided uh, to, he has offered his help for the month of January to help us while we assist finding a replacement. So we do definitely appreciate that. Hats off to you uh, for uh, staying for that extra month. Um, but it's been a great, great run with you. Uh, but with that being said, we've actually have received a second uh, application that I've handed out um, to council today, along with the received one that I emailed earlier last week. But I did give council a hard copy of that one as well. So uh, I'm assuming I'm going to contact Mr. Grimm to see if that ad's going to run again. Um, if council wants me to let it ride, I think to date we have maybe two applications. So it might be beneficial to let it go for another week. Is everyone okay with that? Okay. 
That's all I have for the city manager report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions all right. or comments. Item number 11. Mr. Comments. Please. Uh, Mr. Collier, I just wanted to thank you for your service. Uh, I know you've been on council you know, in years past. You've also been the mayor and now the clerk. You've done, I think you've done an excellent job. You're a real fun person to be around, a smart person. You know the city well. So thank you for your service and I uh, hope whatever you get into after you leave here, you enjoy it. And thank you again. Appreciate that. Thank you. Enjoy your time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mr. Carter. Yes. Since you're going into the land of retirement now. <laughs> I've already been there three times. Yeah, but, but you really haven't been there. You've got to count, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, I also would like to thank you for your service to the city and being our clerk. You've uh, it's been enlightened from time to time with some of our conversations. Uh, not many, but a few, you know. So I also want to, uh, did you fell where? Fell where? Fell well. Fell well. I'll get out in a minute. <laughs> and good luck in all your other endeavors. I would also like to ask you to hang around for a while, if you could, to help the next person to get up to speed. I will. If that would be. Just don't take a long time. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't know if he tends on the teacher. Man, that search is just taking forever, isn't it? I'll tell you, it may take a couple of years now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Any other comments from council? All righty. Item number 11, comments from the member of the public. If anyone has comments, now is your chance. Carried done. There are committees, none tonight. Resolutions, none tonight. Ordinances, we have one. Mr. Collier. Ordinance 1756, public hearing in action tonight, an ordinance declaring it necessary to levy in, in excess of the 10 mil limitation and to place on the May 8, 2018 ballot a 3.0 mil additional levy for five years for, this, for the New Carlisle Fire and EMS Department. Council. I'm moving to the adoption. Second. Yes, Mr. Oh, Wright. Yeah. It's yeah. so an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, this was introduced at last council meetings uh, to go ahead and put a uh, three mil additional levy for five years for the new Carlisle Fire and EMS Department. Again, this is for five years. It will be put to the voters for deciding upon this. Um, but we are having some serious issues with um, retaining good people. We are losing out a nonstop to a lot of private industries who pay more. We're also losing out to area jurisdictions who also pay more as well. On top of that, we've got some capital uh, and some uh, other things that we do need to buy. Um, so this is definitely um, very much needed, um, but I think it's best if our voters vote on that. Council, any comments, questions, or concerns? Mr. Yes, Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Bridge, can you elaborate on how much the other departments around here or the other uh, medic services are paying more than we are? When I average it out, and fire chief, please jump if you have that. You do have actually have the document. We were two or three dollars well below <coughs> across all basic, advanced, and then you know. So we are we are about two or three dollars. Also, does, does, has there been a comparison done of our equipment versus other departments in the area as far as the age of them? Yes. yes. Uh, right now, our equipment is very, very much older than what other departments are using um, in the county. Uh, right now, as of January, our front running pumper is 20 years old. That's the first out engine out of the, out of the station. Mr. Bridge, my direct uh, question to the chief. It's not my meeting, but I don't care. I would, I would consult uh, the mayor. Chief, can you uh, give us an idea of what it will cost to replace that pumper and the life expectancy of most fire engines or pumpers nowadays? Life expectancy of an engine or any piece of apparatus is usually determined also in the first off by NFPA standards. NFPA standards state that after 20 years of frontline pumper, 
uh, a bumper cannot be in a frontline position, it should be in a reserve position. Uh, but also, too, you have to look at practicalities as far as a engine in the city of New Carlisle versus, a, say, an engine in the city of Dayton. It's going to get worn out a lot quicker in the city of Dayton versus us. Uh, and also, too, the maintenance and what kind of maintenance has been done on the apparatus and the upkeep line. Um, right now, we're looking to purchase a new engine. We're looking probably right at the amount of $400,000 for one engine. And that's just for the engine, not for the equipment that goes on, correct? That's, a, that's the engine alone. How much more for the equipment that goes on? Goes what on? we would do, we would take the equipment from the, the frontline pumper that we have now and it would go on to that apparatus. Uh, we would take that pumper, put it in a reserve status where it would not have as much equipment on it as the frontline pumper would. But we would still be looking at purchasing some equipment for it. Okay, thank you, sir. Any other Mr. Conner. Mr. Mayor, can we have a work session with the fire department so everybody has a better understanding what they got to have the uh, personnel that runs his battalion 52, what he's given up if he doesn't respond and stuff like that? This way, everybody has an idea of what. We are planning on after the, if the council agrees to letting us put on the levy, we'd already plan on having two to three open houses at the fire station and planning on laying all of that out for the citizens of what we have right now, uh, what it cost at the time it was purchased, to what it costs now, uh, what our salaries are, what the hours they are, what it costs for one firefighter to be outfitted, what their education level costs. Most of that education is, put, is done by that firefighter themselves, not by the city, and what it costs each year to maintain those certifications. So what, what I was trying to do here, so everybody on council would understand what you're up against, you know. That's fine. It's up to council if they would like to make the motion to have a work session to discuss this, then I think that'd be something we would all be open to entertain. Are you talking about before you vote to put it on the ballot? No, we have to vote on it. You can have a work session to discuss it, but I'm sure it later on in the meeting. Okay, well, we're under a time frame because it's still the Board of Elections. Well, that's what we're going to vote today. Okay. So you're, you're voting. He's asking so for a work session oh, in gotcha. general for public knowledge. No, no, I took it like you have a work session, then vote on the work. Yes. Gotcha. Well, if I could say something. Like, yes. All I was looking at, sure. so all council would understand what he's up against mm -hmm. is, is what I'm getting at for a work session. Uh, I know we have Mr. Uh, Lindsay and somebody else is on that committee. Mr. Oh, Cook. Mr. Leffley. Or, huh? Mr. Leffley. Mr. Leffley. This way everybody has an idea on council what this man's up against. No, I think it's a great idea. We, have, we, we of course, we're going to have a work session, but I think it's a fantastic idea. We can be open to the public. Anyone can come. Sure. But the board that they are on has nothing to do with the fire department. They're on the, um, in the uh, volunteer firefighter defendant fund board. So it's not like a, a board that oversees the operations of the fire department. But you are correct. They are two members of, of a the volunteer firefighters defendant fund. Right, but all I was wanting yeah. council to have a better understanding of what we're going up against here. I agree with you, 100%. And I'd like to make a motion, Mayor, to have a work session. Well, you can have a motion on the floor. May I have a motion? Okay, we go to vote first. So I'll have to vote on this motion, and then we'll have to get back to your motion. Excuse me. <clears throat> Any other comments, questions, or concerns? All right, Mr. Collier. Mr. Lowry. Yes, sir. Mr. Lethley. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Lighty. Yes. According to 1756, passes 7 to 0. No other ordinances are introduced or action, so now we're moving to item 15, other business. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lethley. I will finish my letter in part. With that, I have no other choice than to resign my position on the New Colorado City Council, effective at the end of this meeting, January 2nd, 2018. It is with the deepest of regrets that I am forced to take this position, as I would truly be looking forward to helping make a difference, as well as continue to build on the positive growth that the city has experienced the past two years. I'm grateful to having the opportunity to serve the citizens of New Carolina this past year while working with Mr. Lowry, Councilman Lighting, Lowry Craybacker, Craybacker, 
city manager bridge and all the city staff respectfully to one any other business all right well time okay. go ahead I have a couple things please yes go ahead. Uh, right ahead mr what? lethley i uh oh so, yeah mr lethley That's i really hated to hear that letter i had a feeling it was coming um you for the short amount of time you were on council you <laughs> you're like a wizard when it comes to numbers and that comes with your profession of working at the bank so i think that just uh that's a hard blow to the city i think to take um i'm sad to hear that to be honest um so th but thank you for your service and your time if you want to um, if I'm, okay. uh, also second i just wanted to thank everyone who was brave enough and maybe not the smartest to come out to the ball drop it was freezing cold but it was still a good turnout so thanks to everyone that did come out it was a it was a short event but it was a good time and i think that the people who did show up enjoyed it for the most part so thank you Mr. Kaka? After council, it, once you guys are done, I do have some other business through Mr. Bridge. He does. I okay. got sidetracked. I do apologize. Okay. <laughs> after the meeting? Uh, no, no, after you, after, after council, you're done. Yes, oh. okay. Any other comments from council? Mr. Lindsay? Uh, I also would like to uh, thank Mr. Leslie for his short service to the city. Uh, his knowledge on financial is impeccable. And uh, I think we will miss him as far as the financial side of it goes. He uh, has always been nice to me, so that's the only thing I can say. I hope I've always been nice to him. And I, uh, I uh, would like to uh, say thank you for your service, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mr. Bridge and I were talking. I got a phone call today from the RCAP, Rural Communities uh, Development. And we had applied last spring for an Ohio EPA loan as a possible uh, funding for our water tower project. Um, I am in, like, right at the very end where either I got to proceed and get some paperwork done because it's due by the end of the month. They've been kind of waiting on me. Uh, obviously, we've had a lot of discussion with what's been going on. Or because of the ordinance that passed last, uh, two weeks ago, we've already kind of decided to go with a no interest, um, pay it, pay back general fund type scenario. And if that is the case, I just want an informational, I can call them back, say, you know what, we don't want the loan, we don't want to pay on this for X amount of years at an interest rate. And just on a basic interest rate, I calculated it's be price $75,000, just an in interest if we were to take out a loan. So I wanted to bring that up. Just let everyone know before I go back and tell them we decline the loan offer if we do get into another scenario where we may need our uh, EPAs. Calls, please. <laughs> Mannequin shot. Good, good ears. I've run that before. You're clear. Yeah, I don't, you're, you're clear. Um, before, and we may need the Ohio EPA services again for a, a loan down the road. So I just didn't want to hold them up any longer before telling them we don't need the. the um, the loan monies. All right, thank you. Any other comments from council? I have one. Mr. Coyne? City offices will be closed on Monday, January the 15th in honor of Martin Luther King Day. <laughs> <laughs> and I want you guys to forget me. <laughs> Mr. Trustee. I'd like to thank the council for the vote this evening. I love you. Uh, it is just mm -hmm. what we needed. Um, <laughs> and if the citizens are, are kind enough and the Lord blesses us with it, the money we use for what, for what it should be. Um, also, one other note, I just wanted everyone to know that the March radio system, uh, we are now March radio. Uh, we are in full, full force with the March radio system. We did our crossover on January 1st uh, with very little problems or conflict at all. And we are now being dispatched out of our county sheriff's office. And we have full more capabilities with all of the departments. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Uh, Chief, thanks again. Uh, thanks for all the work you've done at the fire department. Ever since you showed up, you've done an excellent job. I know morale was always a big question when you take when you take in, you know, your position there. So thank you for everything you've done. Um, and Happy New Year to all the city staff, citizens, council, uh, Chief, uh, Deputy Allender, uh, the city work uh, road crew. Uh, I guess make sure you stay safe out there. It is so cold, as you guys know. So make sure you be careful. All right, thank you. Well.
Any other council comments? I have. Oh, do you have one, Mr. Oh. I have one. Uh, just number one, I want to thank my friends and family for supporting me across my time here, and it's been rough. I want to thank the members of council that voted for me and to the ones that didn't vote for me. The message to you guys is I will work hard to earn your vote in the future. Uh, elections and or ordinances or resolutions that come up that are a part of our council duties. Mr. Luffley, I'm sad to see you go. Uh, I think that we all have some lessons to be learned and I think the one thing that we all need to learn, I think as we've said it time and time again, is working as a team like we did at the previous meeting where we all collaborated and worked together and everything was pretty okay and the ship was righted and we all sailed together in the right direction and I hope we can do that for the future. I want to thank Mr. Lowry for his service to our city as mayor and as a council member. I want to thank Mr. Wesley for his service. Mr. Lowry as well for yours. I hope you all can work together in a forward manner in 2018. So um, there are executive session. There is none tonight and Mr. Mayor, mm -hmm. yes, Mr. Mayor, we adjourn. You got the seat, buddy. Adjourn. <laughs> <laughs>